Hi everyone, this is Anil Bhatia again from PAT. Fun begins. Practical Architectural Training, a unit of ADS Architects Design Studio. In the past few videos, we have understood air conditioning, waterproofing, and also how to read raft foundation drawings. We finished this topic in the last video, and after that, we also took up Vastu in between. Today, we are starting a new topic electrical work for a small house. We shall understand first how to make a proper electrical drawing of any room and why it is important to clear each and every circuit in a drawing. Secondly, how do we actually calculate the amount of light fittings required in a room? And thirdly, what kind of fittings are available for internal lighting like cove light, recessed light, pendant light, etc. Fourthly, what kind of fittings are available for external lighting like up lighters for columns, down lighters, pathway lighters, etc. And lastly, how can we automate these lights and actually use an app on the phone and control all electrical devices in our house. You can even control the lights, fans, air conditioners and practically every electronic item anywhere by Wi-Fi using your phone. Okay, so let's get started. First, let me discuss how we in our office at ADS make electrical drawings. We make two drawings for each room. One drawing shows the ceiling electrical and the other drawing shows the wall electrical. Let's take an example of a simple living room. Let's look on the left where we have shown the ceiling drawing of this living room. The size of this living room is 12 feet by 24 feet. We are assuming it. It has two fans and one chandelier. Have a closer look. And there is a false ceiling all around the ends of the room. This has 12 ceiling recessed lights. These are down lighters. Have a closer look again. And one dotted line representing a continuous cove light all around, shown as CL, cove light. We have chosen a very simple fall ceiling for this example because our motto here is to explain only how things are represented in an electrical drawing. We shall not talk about wiring yet. We shall talk about wiring and sizes of wires later. Now let's look at the wall electrical drawing shown on the left. In the wall electrical drawing, it is necessary to show all the doors and windows. Secondly, we must show all switchboards on all walls with heights given. Thirdly, we must show position of air conditioners. Have a close look. All three things are shown there. Now we are assuming there is no other device in the room. So we have one switchboard at the entrance to the drawing room at plus 3 feet 6 inch level. That is the height. Have a closer look at that. And four switchboards at a level of plus 9 inch from the floor. Now if you have a closer look at the drawing, you can see the switchboards, all the switchboards, five switchboards which I have mentioned. 
Now the main switchboard at the entrance has to control four things in the ceiling. First, the two fans. Second, the chandelier. Third, the downlighters. And fourth, the cove light. And the air conditioner socket and switch is at plus 9 inch level. Either in the switch number 3 or switch number 5 mentioned in the drawing. Now the locations of the switchboards and their heights are very much clear and also position of ceiling fans and lights. So what next? Next is the details of the switchboard. Have a look on the left. You can see in SB1 there are two fan switches and two fan regulators at the top. Below that there are six switches. One of these six can be used for the chandelier. The second can be used for lights C1 and C2 shown in the ceiling. Have a closer look C1 and C2. The third switch can be used for C3 and C4 lights. The fourth switch can be used for the down lighters D1 and D2. The fifth switch can be used for D3 and D4 lights. Again, these are down lighters. And one switch remains which is not usable. Here a dummy blank switch is used. Now look at the switchboards SB3 and SB5. They are similar so names are clubbed. SB3 and SB5 have one socket for air conditioner with a switch to put it on and one light socket for a lampshade or anything that is required on a side table. The SB2 switch board has a power come light combined socket. Have a closer look with a switch and there is an outlet for a telephone. And lastly the SB4 switch has just a combined socket and a normal light and power socket. The combined sockets can be used for either a point for lampshade or a heater etc. This is how the switchboards are shown in detail so that the electrician can understand which size of box he has to procure. Here SB1 will be called the main switchboard SB1 that will be called a 12 module switchboard. SB3 and SB5 shall be called a 6 module switchboard. SB2 shall be a 4 module switchboard and SB4 shall be called a 3 module one. Have a closer look at all the switchboards. So the electrician will know exactly which box is required in which area. Again I am not going into the wire type required for use in each switchboard. These two drawings are enough for work at the site with a wiring diagram showing which switch is connected to which item. But if you number every light then even the wiring loops can be avoided and this is shown in the drawing on the left. The wiring loop in this case is left to the discretion of a good electrician. So no need for a loop diagram in the true sense. But for larger areas and larger projects of course 
you will always require a looping diagram for wiring which we, sh we will learn later in the next video. Here it is important to understand that the AC generally has a direct line from the AC switchboard to the distribution board of that floor in case of a small house. The lights, fans, light sockets, all these have a separate loop for wiring till the distribution board again. And the power points have a separate loop till the distribution board. Generally, this is the method. Though this may mean a little extra wiring, but it helps in identifying zones and repair them later too without disturbing the other zones. Now we have understood the basics of how to represent electrical points by way of two drawings for any area. Let us now understand how to calculate the quantity of wattage required for any area for lighting only. Presently, we are assuming we shall be using LED fittings. The color of light can be white or warm white as used in our normal language. We shall go into the details about color later. There are certain factors on which the wattage is calculated. The first factor is the variation in height of the room. Have a look at the drawing. If the room height changes, then wattage required per square meter of that area of the room that changes. The second factor is the task being performed in the room. Like in a kitchen, you may require more wattage than in a drawing room per square meter again. And the third thing is the finishes of the rooms finishes of the surfaces in the room. So if you have darker surfaces, then they will not reflect light and more wattage shall be required per square meter. Considering all these factors will be perfect calculation method for quantity of wattage required in a room. And what I will do is that at the end of the next video, I shall tell you the method of calculation. Otherwise, we shall lose the flow of this lecture for the students who really don't want to go into these details for smaller projects. Generally, we take a height of 10 feet for a normal residential house for all zones. And generally, we assume that the surfaces are of light colors. So assuming this, we will go ahead and based on this, we have already made a chart using the calculations mentioned. Now look at the chart on the left. This chart gives the lumens required per square meter for any area in the house. Say you want to calculate lumens required for a drawing room we were discussing, then the lumens required are 182 per square meter. So if the height of fitting is 2.75 meters or approximately 9 feet 2 inches, this is the normal height of fitting in a house. So our room is 12 feet by 24 feet. That is 288 square feet or 26.7 square meter. So we shall require around 4870 lumens for this room. The calculations are shown there. Now comes the wattage. Lumens per watt given up by a LED fixture 
is between 80 to 100. So that means one watt gives out 80 lumens of light. If we take this as 80, then 4870 divided by 80 is 60 watts. So we require a total of 60 watts in this room. So if we use a LED fitting of 6 watts, we shall be requiring 10 fittings. In our case, we had used 12 fittings. So it is okay because sometimes we do feel like having a little more light. The cove light is not counted because that is optional to create an atmosphere for a certain mood. And the chandelier is also for a different mood. We have hence managed to calculate with a chart and certain thumb rules which are based on certain authentic calculations. We shall definitely understand these calculations in our next video. We have to next study how to automate these lights, fans and even the air conditioner. We also have to understand how an EPABX works for intercom in a house and how wiring is done. We have to also understand how security system wiring is done and how cameras can be used for recording everything. So we shall definitely need at least one more video. Now let me introduce you to my staff who helped me in this presentation and research. Shivangi and Shagun. If you have any queries, please write to the email ID mentioned below. We shall be back to continue with this topic, electrical work for a small house. Till then, bye, take care.